All right, welcome back to Robinhood Stock Market Watch List. My name is Carlos. I'm the creator and administrator of the uh, our Facebook group. Uh, today is Sunday, April 3rd, and uh, we are having our live meeting and uh, training event that we usually do every week or uh, every other weekend. And so, uh, we're going to we always go over some kind of educational material in the beginning and then we always like to look ahead uh what the week is is going to look like uh we can usually pinpoint uh with some pretty good accuracy whether each day is going to be bearish or bullish uh as well as what stocks to look for and how to look for them uh it is just highly valuable information this meeting or video, uh, because this is going to be recorded as well, typically can take one to maybe two hours normally. Um, and so, um, but it's it's highly educational information. So uh, the last meeting that we had, we, we talked about moving averages. Moving averages is a really, really critical, uh, very important thing that is, um, that is very, very important. And I did post, uh, some videos of that in our um our little um you know thing here I'm trying to find in under discussions under our event uh, i posted a lot of materials that that we talked about previously but also what we're going to talk about today and so this is here for your reference uh, it's in our group under the the event uh, of our meeting and, and training uh, for today. So we have our uh, part one, which is what you're going to re want to rewatch if you didn't watch it uh, during our last meeting, you're definitely going to wa want to watch it again because moving averages helps you to provide you your buying and selling signals. It It's letting you know when to get in, when to get out. I mean, that's an ultimate question that a lot of investors investors and traders have. And each of these videos are are animated. They're, they're four minutes a piece and they really go over um, uh, what they are and, and, and how to utilize them. Uh, you can also go to our YouTube uh, channel and look at our previous meetings and, uh, and, and that way you can kind of go over our discussions as well as how to configure the moving averages accordingly to your style in trading and investing. But uh, today uh, I wanted to talk about uh, patterns. Patterns is really what helps provide us an idea of what direction the stock price uh, will most likely head next. And so, uh, and some of them are bullish, some of them are bearish, meaning where the stock price is intended to go up or intended to go down. And so you may, a lot of new investors get confused because like, for example, the top left, it's going down and it has a target down. And they're like, why? I mean, aren't you supposed to buy low and, and sell high? Uh, if you know that that stock price is gonna go down, you can bet against it using options. You have calls that that you're betting that the stock goes up with a tremendous amount of leverage, uh, or a put is betting against the stock, betting that the stock's gonna go down. So if you know the stock's gonna go down, you could uh you could either sell your shares get out or uh or if you're holding calls that's when you, you you're going to want to sell and then you can buy puts if you don't have calls or, or shares or whatever buy puts and and bet against it and uh and so the idea is if it's providing this signal and once like for example most of the time you'll see these a lot throughout the, the day for, for day traders. You have your one minute graph and you have your five minute graph. You don't see these usually during your, your daily charts, you know, that if you're a week out, months out or whatever, but you can find them. Uh, uh, they are rare, but you, you do want to look for them. Uh, if you're, even if you're a short term or a long term uh, a trader, you will find a lot of these types of patterns. But like I said, most of the time you'll find them on a uh, daily basis uh, if you're a uh, if you're looking at a one minute or five minute chart so for example the uh, the double top um, whether the stock market's down or the stock market's up 
the uh, as soon as the stock market opens early in the morning usually the stock market or the the stocks usually tend to go up a little bit um could be about five minutes so we have open from here and then five minutes it it, it comes up to the top at some point starts to hesitate and then the next five minutes it comes down and uh, touches and forms this neckline so it's been about 10 minutes from that point the next five minutes then it comes back up and kind of reaches a, a second point uh, but right about the same point as the last one and so but then again and at that point it's been about 15 minutes so the, the first 15 minutes of the day is it has a lot of volatility and it can kind of give us a lot of information of of, of what's going to happen next and so but then it starts to hesitate and begins to fall and it's around this this area here well we have uh three things that we're well four things we're seeing we're seeing a stop a neckline entry and a target so the neckline is just kind of the you know like a a, a certain zone you know uh that, that we're looking for uh because the entry is when we want to buy in betting against it betting that it, that the stock price is going to go down we don't want to really get in too early because if you do uh, it could easily bounce because maybe it's forming a head and shoulders or maybe it's the uh maybe it's something else and so but you, you gotta be patient patience is, is a virtual and so uh but the stop is a stop loss or it, the uh, trade idea is now invalid because maybe it's forming a different pattern or, or something. And so if, if you have already entered or bought in, this is stop. That's a stop loss. Time to get out because now your moving averages is showing an upwards trending direction, not a downwards. Uh, so uh, but that's why you want to wait and, and, and make sure because once it touches that neckline, uh, it, and, and goes back down, that thing's gonna go down for, for uh, until further notice. But be, uh, so the entry is, is where we wanna get in. The target is when we wanna sell. But the when you'll know when to sell is your moving averages will provide you that buying and selling signal. So you, you, you wait, you hold until it, it tells you when you need to get out. Uh, and even if you, you sell your put, uh, you can you, you can buy a call you can keep going back and forth and, and and doing it that way and and profit from both directions doesn't always have to profit from from the same direction so patterns is really critical and there's a lot of uh, bearish patterns and there's there's some uh, bullish patterns even if it's a if, if the stock is is falling you know maybe it's during the first hour you have this falling wedge uh, but there's something that we're going to talk about here in a little bit that really has a big impact on the stock market and that's economic reports and uh, a lot of times an economic report can be uh could be uh released during pre-market sometimes it can be released during or after uh after the market opens could be 30 minutes or maybe an hour after these economic reports that the government re releases they do it strategically uh, uh, on purpose with, with the times of the day, like maybe an hour right before the stock market opens or maybe an hour after the stock market because the, the most busiest time, the most active time of, of the day for the stock market is the first hour and the last hour of the day. So if the, if the first hour goes by and all of a sudden we have uh, an economic report that comes out an hour, what happens? It builds back momentum. So we've got a lot more volatility. So for example, like some falling wedge, you know, stock market was up because maybe we had some good economic reports uh, you know, during pre-market or, or whatever it is, and, and it's up really high. And then the first hour, it kind of comes down and it's forming this pattern. But now we have another economic report that we know about, but it, and we anticipate it's gonna provide bullish uh, uh, characteristics with the stock market. And then all of a sudden, boom, it does this. So it, it's really important that we start looking at this regularly on a daily basis print it out do whatever you got to do until you have it memorized because the more you learn the more you're you're going to earn so uh and then same thing with the uh the bilateral patterns on the bottom so we have our ascending triangle descending triangle and our uh, symmetrical triangle in these situations it's it's more or less 50 50. so like for example the symmetrical triangle on the bottom right I used to see this a lot with uh, penny stocks when I was uh, trading penny stocks many years ago, 
um, you would see that a penny stock would quickly surge up because maybe some biopharmaceutical had some really you know great news or maybe it's being manipulated uh, but if, if something can shoot up straight up like that I mean it can easily fall right back down where, where it started so the idea is to really you know imagine a square box around the price line but also imagine certain lines like this that kind of form a, a certain funnel uh, and, and at the end of the little funnel here, at the end of the triangle, that's when something's gonna happen. And so we have to wait until it reaches the entry point. The entry, once it reaches that certain area, once it breaks out of its little zone, that is telling you that's the direction that it's going to go until further notice. Now, just because it reaches the target doesn't mean that it's gonna stay there. It can easily come right back down and do the complete opposite. It'll keep forming new algorithms, new patterns and whatnot. So you have to be active. You can't just hold and, and, and be on a hope system. You can't hope, you can't throw money at something and hope that it's gonna stick. You gotta be active, you gotta get in, get out, secure your gains and, and repeat the process. So uh, patterns, so again, I highly recommend, uh, you know, print that out, look at it daily, do whatever you gotta do until you have them memorized, the patterns, including the names of the patterns. And we'll focus together within our group and our chat room and alert each other if we if we recognize anything. That way, um, you know, it just helps everybody out, uh, including yourself. And so, uh, and as we as we're kind of finishing the patterns thing, uh, as we talk about the economic reports, have a huge impact on the entire stock market. Uh, 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 more than pretty much anything else, except for massive, you know, world news, you know, like invasions and whatnot, or, you know, uh, rockets being launched in the, in the sky, you know, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, economic reports is something we can predict. I've been in a lot of many other uh, websites. However, investing.com has a app that you can download from your app store, uh, but it, it may look like it may be overwhelming, uh, very sophisticated, but it's it's not. I mean, it's it's uh, there's just certain areas to look for, and particularly the economic calendar. So we have it here, uh, but there's other areas we can get it uh, into. If you're on the mobile application, it should be on the kind of the middle bottom area. It look, look, looks like a calendar. And there may be a, a tab where you can change it between earnings calendar, economic calendar, dividends calendar, and whatnot. But we want the economic calendar because we gotta know what's gonna happen here in the near future before it happens. So once we get to the economic calendar, we need to clear a couple things. Uh, we need to click on filters or if you're on the mobile application, it'll look like a little little funnel. Uh, so you'll click on that, just clear everything. There's only two things that we need to see. We, we got to put a check mark under United States, and then under importance, you'll see that there's a uh, one star, two stars, and a three stars. You want to put a check mark under three stars because we're telling the system that we want to see everything that will have the biggest impact on the United States stock market system. When you have those two selected, click apply. Uh, and then we'll click on uh, of this week, because today's Sunday. And so if you're looking at this on the website, the times are gonna be based on the Eastern time. So depending on your time zone, you just have to do the math and figure out what that means for you in your time zone. If you're looking at it on your phone or your tablet, it'll grab your time zone and it'll it'll let you know what time these will be released in your time zone so it's just very very important and the reason why that is is because the news companies receive this the same information at the exact time the, this is released so it only benefits you to get this information as soon as they do because it takes time for them to to collect the information they have to type out an article they have to blast it out and then it takes time for people's notifications at that time it could be 30 minutes i mean it could be 15 minutes 30 minutes 45 minutes it could be hours until you got this bit of news and by that time it could be too late and so uh whether the uh report is providing uh 
you know, bad news or, or good news, it can help provide you information of what you need to do next or for, or for the day, especially if it, if, if it was anticipated, if it was expected to happen, or maybe something unexpected happened. And, and it's like, uh, you know, and, and you'll notice that the market has not reacted quite yet to it. Sometimes it takes about an hour, you know, whether it's bad news, uh, that was reported and all of a sudden the, the 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 market is is bullish it's green you know it's like uh guys time to get out because you know, and then all of a sudden that you see the market starting to hesitate and now it's starting to kind of downtrend your bot your your moving averages is, is providing your 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 selling signals that means it's time to get out i mean there's so many of these these red flags and clues and, and stuff to really to, to look for but we can kind of plan ahead too. But it's also really important to look at this page on a daily basis because uh, sometimes it, it's updated. Sometimes they throw in more reports or for example, like this, the crude oil inventories doesn't have a forecast yet, but I, I bet it will later today or uh, sometime early tomorrow morning during pre-market. Because the crude oil inventories, that's going to be very interesting because of the whole uh, Biden wanting to pump, you know, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, an extra a bar billion barrels a day of oil here in the United States. So, but let's let's talk about the first one. So for Monday, there's nothing scheduled for for Monday. So there's nothing, no economic report that's scheduled to be released as of yet that could. Kind of manipulate the uh the stock market but you know there's other factors that can play you know uh, uh fridays usually investors don't like to hold throughout the weekend because they're sometimes investors are, are afraid that something could happen especially with the escalation of, of russia and and and, and, and ukraine's invasion and, and whatnot you know uh you know that can really you know cause some bearish characteristics uh, or other bad news, you know, Kim Jong Un in North Korea could launch more missiles and whatnot, and and uh, you know the media could really push that, you know, selling the fear, creating more uh, bearish uh, uh, characteristics. And so, but so far, I don't I haven't really seen anything major that's that's caused any, you know. So I, uh, it lo it's looking like Monday could be pretty good. Uh, there was a lot of calls that even though uh, Friday or the last uh, uh, three trading days were were pretty. Uh, bearish, um, it, it's more than likely Monday is going to be bullish, and so uh, it, we are in a new a new month. We're in a new quarter. We're in a new season. The last quarter, which is now done and over with, is uh, or or the the first quarter, the the winter season, is the most bearish season out of the year. The stock market has a yearly algorithm, and it has a ten year algorithm. The, the yearly algorithm where the, the winter season, the most bearish season of the year, stocks and crypto or whatever can, can usually be down. That's where you can find their their, their rock bottom prices for, for the rest of the year. And then the springtime, that's where we're in now. Uh, for the next three months, the, the second quarter, uh, uh, we're a new earnings season, a uh, new, new quarter. Uh, all of those yearly economic reports are now done, uh, which had created a lot of bearish uh, characteristics as well. We can now look forward uh, for the rest of the year, uh, planning for certain things to happen, like uh, um, uh, I think Tesla's talking about maybe doing another split. Uh, we have Amazon with Jeff Bezos. Now, all of a sudden, he wants to do a split, even though he said in the past, oh, I'm never going to do is uh, I'm never going to split my stock. And now all of a sudden, you know, he is because it was a it was a pandemic stock. Now it's been downtrending and he's like, uh, what do I do next? And so he's, he's going to follow uh, Elon Musk and, and Tim Cook. And so, uh, th so there's just a lot of stuff going on, especially with, with, with cannabis. We're going to hear a lot more news about cannabis, which we'll talk about that here really quick. It only takes a, a few minutes. I invested throughout cannabis uh, when during the whole uh, uh, Canadian phase when it wasn't yet legalized in, in Canada. All of a sudden, Canada start, started to do a vote, just like what we're doing now. And, uh, and they had passed 
And uh, so they had said to Dave, oh, next year, uh, then it'll be uh, legalized. Everybody's like, yeah, you know, we're, everybody's pumping cannabis stocks up. They were, you know, penny stocks originally. Now they're, 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 they're $30, $50, $100, $150, you know, uh, a cannabis stock. I mean, everybody was like, you know, this is, this is a long-term investment, short-term investment. I mean, hell, nobody knew. And so all of a sudden, as the, the day that Canada legalized it during the next calendar year uh all the you had all these farmers all these stores throughout canada growing cannabis and selling cannabis it was too competitive they flooded the market and and uh they could not no longer profit from it anymore and so they they were struggling to, uh, and so all these stocks just plunged for for well between now and, and then and so uh and now they're penny stocks again you know, we're back to the dollar three dollars five dollars and, and and now they you know they, they they did the vote last week and 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 uh they all surged like 50 percent. so they're hesitating now because the whole uh, uh, uh cannabis vote has to go through the senate we'll see you know how, how that goes uh where which is very interesting to see that a lot of the, the democrats are for it but the rubber republicans are not but uh, but this is definitely some good revenue that the that the economy desperately needs and can really help out the uh, the, the stock market. But uh, the same scenario is going to happen here. Now Mexico legalized uh, recreational cannabis over there. The United States is sandwiched in between two countries that have recreational uh, legal uh, marijuana. And so the, it, it's inevitable that the United States is going to legalize it, which is an amazing lifetime opportunity to be able to go through this again. So if they, if they pass it through the Senate and it just goes through all the hoops, th these penny stock cannabis are going to reach that $50 again, $100, $150. We'll be able to ride that wave. But just know, as soon as they legalize it, the next calendar year, these stocks are going to plunge. But it, the whole industry is going to be—it's going to be weird because you're going to have a lot of corporations. I mean, you can even have a Coca-Cola, whatever, deciding to offer some CBD, you know, Coca-Cola drinks. I mean, we're going to have some weird, you know, things that are going to happening that we here in the United States that we haven't really seen anywhere else. And there's a lot of corporations that have already been experimenting with with products they're ready for this because they know this is going to happen it, it's just a matter of, of when it's going to happen but be ready because this is going to be a, a very good opportunity uh and, and as soon as they legalize it as things start to plunge we can bet against it we'll buy puts we'll ride that wave down and uh because people are these wall street it's just like what wall street investors and pro traders say buy on rumor sell on news as soon as it happens boom, it goes down. Just like the whole split thing that we were talking about between uh, um, uh, Amazon and if Tesla does it again uh, and, and whomever, when a, a big company like that splits, it creates a lot of volatility, a lot of uh, volume, a lot more, and it really pumps up the stock. Now, between the when they release the, uh, the information that, yeah, they are gonna do the split and they have a date, that stock is going to trend between now and then. As soon as the stock splits, that stock typically, I see it go down 20%. You're gonna lose 20% if you're holding it at that point, but it is highly recommended to get out right before it splits. At the day it splits, you will notice that it's gonna go down until it usually gets down about you know 20% uh, by puts. You can, you can profit from both directions, even if, well, we can straddle two if you want to play really, really safe. But like I said, this happens all the time and, and I, I, I've watched it. For example, uh, I think uh, Tesla was what, around $1,500 and uh, uh, they announced, oh, we're, we're going to do a split. And then uh, for the next couple months, it went from like $1,500, went from $2,000. And, uh, and then all of a sudden it reached $2,500. They did a five-way split, which made it into $500. And then at that point, in the next two weeks, it went down to $400, and, uh, uh, which is 20%. And, uh, and then it started to slowly recover after that point. Apple did the exact same thing and all the other previous ones did the exact same thing. Look at their history or whatever, or maybe you already know because you went through it. 
And so, uh, but just be ready. There's a lot of great opportunities that are going to happen uh, this quarter. And so, uh, so to, uh, Monday, I would say Monday looks pretty good until further notice. Uh, we'll watch the, uh, the the U.S. futures, and which the U.S. futures, uh, once it's active later today, uh, is very very uh, 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 responsive. Usually, this information will update by the second, and it's really uh, fascinating to watch in the mobile application. Um, you know, throughout the day, that way you can see you know what what's kind of going on uh, there as well as other. Uh, world markets. So Tuesday, we have the ISM non-manufacturing PMI report for the uh, month of March. Now, uh, normally what we could see yearly economic reports, we'll see quarterly ec economic reports, monthly and weekly. The more rare the economic report is, the more of an impact it'll have on the stock market. So uh, but this being a monthly report, we'll have a pretty good uh, impact on the uh, stock market. Now, this report is scheduled to be released 30 minutes after the stock market opens. So uh, it will continue whatever uh, momentum that there is there. If there isn't any momentum on Tuesday, it will start some uh, at, at that at that point. So. Uh, if you're not sure exactly what these are, because when you look at them regularly every day, eventually you'll you'll have them memorized. You'll know. But if you don't know, I just click on it. Uh, it'll, it'll let you know in a very small paragraph of, of what it, what it is and uh, how it will have an impact on the uh, stock market. So, for example, the Institute of Supply Management, which is the ISM or Non Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, or the PMI, also known as the uh, ISM Services uh, PMI, report on the business or on business, a, comp uh, a composite index is calculated as an indicator of the overall economic condition for the non manufacturing sector. The NMI is a composite index based on the uh, diffusion indexes uh, for four of the indicators with equal weights, such as your business activity, uh, new orders, employment, and supplier deliveries. Now, uh, in this case, the, a higher than expected reading should be taken as a positive or bullish for the US dollar or the stock market, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as a negative or bearish for the US dollar. So most of these reports need that the numbers need to be higher, but some of them need to be lower, such as you know the crude oil inventories or maybe the unemployment report. The lower the numbers, uh, the better, but most of the numbers need to be uh, higher. So, but it does show us a previous report of what it was reported uh, prior. So the month of February was reported at 56.5. So it's forecast that this report is supposed to be higher at 58.0. Now, this information is basically telling us that Tuesday is most likely going to be bullish. It's going to be green because they anticipate that this is going to be higher than what it was before. Now, even if it if it reported, if the report came back, even if it was lower than 58, as long as it's uh, slightly higher than the previous report, we're fine. If it's higher than the forecast, we're even better. Game on, you know, it's, you know, it's, we're gonna see the morning probably even double. But uh, as long as it's in between these two, we're good. If it's lower than this, you'll notice that a lot of the Wall Street investors, and as well as ourselves, uh, have anticipated that it was going to be green anyways. You'll notice that the morning is green and everything. But if it reaches that or less, that green day can easily turn red. So that's why it's important that we, we monitor this stuff as soon as it happens. Because if it hits that and if it's green, we know what's going to happen next. We know the dangers. We know the risk. We know what to look for. We look for those moving averages. We look for patterns. We, we wait until it provides us when to get out and then we do. And so that is why this is extremely important because it's letting us know what the day is going to be like or most likely it's going to be like. Now, there can always be su surprises, but most of the time, this usually follows our anticipation by almost more than 80 percent and so wednesday 
we have the crude oil inventory levels. So this report is scheduled to be released one hour after the stock market opens. So again, just like what we were talking about, the first hour of the day, the last hour of the day is the most volatile, most active uh, times of the day. So after that first hour, that's gone. And then all of a sudden the crude oil inventories come in, providing more uh, uh, volatility. And so the previous report, which was good, because this is a report where we need the numbers down. If the oil levels are down, that means people are driving, they're, they're spending money on the gas and oil and, and, and other uh, products like you know plastic products and whatnot. Uh, but also it means, you know, people are maybe traveling, they're, they're on, going on vacations, you know, they're spending money and that helps the economy and investors like that. If the crude oil inventories are higher, especially in the positive, because we want them in the negatives, if they're in the positive, that is bearish. All of a sudden that could lead to a very, you know, red day. And so, and that's why I'm worried about this whole, you know, w 1 billion barrels being pumped in the United States, pumping it in the, but then again, Biden and the, the White House and that whole administration have always been saying, we're not going to pump any more, we're not going to pump any more oil than what we are. It's not going to make a difference, blah, blah, blah. They, they just came up with every single excuse in the book not to pump more oil here in the United States. Now, all of a sudden last week, Putin, the, the, the leader of, uh, the, you know, the dictator in, 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 in Russia threatened all of Europe saying that, you know, he might no longer provide energy to Europe. So now Europe is panicking, which has also created part of the, the bearish days of, of last week. And so Biden all, all of a sudden said, all right, we'll, we'll pump 1 billion barrels a day. All this is going to, most of this is going to uh, Europe. We're not getting much of it, but so we're gonna have to see what happens. You know, if, if they start pumping oil and they, and they start, and it's interfering with our inventory levels, these inventory levels could go up and that could provide really massive bearish characteristics. So I'm, I'm definitely very worried about how that is going to play out with our crude oil inventory reports. There's no forecast yet. So that's, that's to me, that's a red flag as well. But I have seen in the past where they were late putting a forecast on there. But you can see there's forecasts on everything else. There's never forecasts on, on the, on the uh, Fed meetings. But, uh, but there's no forecast on the crude oil inventory level. So it, it, it's, like I said, that's a red flag to me. It's like, uh, are they not telling us? So we'll have to visit this again later today and, and tomorrow morning during pre-market. That way we can see exactly whether we know if Monday or Wednesday is going to be bearish or uh, um, bullish. Now, we do have the Fed meeting on uh, Wednesday. Now, the Fed meeting, they usually like talk, talk about interest rates. We got a lot of politicians. We got to start increasing interest rates now. We got, you know, every month or every every quarter, you know, a quarter percent, half percent, you know, it, it's a mess. And uh, it definitely creates a lot of volatility. And this is definitely something that can affect during power hour, which is the last hour of the of the trading day on Wednesday. So Wednesday is expect a lot of volatility Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, not as much, but still, you know, expect some, but Wednesday looks like that's going to be the most volatile day of the week. And then Thursday, uh, we have our uh, unemployment report. Now the unemployment report, uh, you know, the, the last or the week before last was was very very low i mean it was like record breaking low since you know the beginning of, of the pandemic and normally when you see a big movement in unemployment like that there's there's a there's a bounce and so i definitely anticipated that it was going to bounce off because it was like like 189 or 185 you know the, the the other week or the week before last and then it bounced back up to 202 and so uh, now usually when it does that, it usually kind of tends to fall back down. It trickles down a little bit. So I, I definitely I'm very, you know, uh, very certain that this is how it's going to play out. I'm sure that the Wall Street investors and everybody else feel the same exact way. 
And so this report is scheduled to be released one hour before the stock market opens. So this is going to help create a lot of volatility, extra volatility when the stock market opens on, on Thursday. It'll most likely open in the green, but to be determined, at least we have one hour to kind of figure that out. Uh, before the stock market opens, but I anticipate that it's that the report is going to be good. Most likely, it's going to come back lower than two hundred thousand, probably like one ninety five, one ninety two, one ninety, something like that. And so, uh, but it, it should be pretty good. So uh, this week, I think overall looks really good. It's just the beginning of our our spring season. Now, the spring season, the next three months. As I had mentioned, the winter season is uh, is the bear season of the year. That is when we see a majority of, of uh, red days. Uh, we'll see a lot of the, the stock market opens in the red and uh, closes in the red. There may be a couple green days in there, but most of the time you have like 80% is gonna be red, 20% is gonna be green. The, this quarter that we're in now is like our transitional uh, quarter where uh, it's trying to you know blend it together so you kind of have like a 50 50 or 60 40 where you know the the, the day would open in the in the in the uh, uh, green close in the red maybe open in the red close in the green or maybe red red or green green the next day or whatever you know it, it's gonna it's kind of it'll just kind of feel like a 50 50 until we get closer towards the summertime then it's it's uh then most of the time the 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 days are 80 percent green and then 20 percent red so it kind of has the opposite effect of of the winter season now as i mentioned before uh the stock market has a yearly cycle also has a 10-year cycle the 10-year cycles where you know really crazy catastrophic things happen like the uh like the whole pandemic thing you know shutting down the economy you know uh or uh the um the housing collapse uh the the automotive bailout you know the twin towers getting hit the the, the berlin wall you know, all this stuff every 10 years there's something catastrophic that just creates a massive dip but it bad news can be good news it just depends on how you or our government or politicians want to react to it you know uh it, it provides great buying opportunities and so uh so that's investing.com our economic reports highly highly critical because it like i said it just tells us what the week is going to be like looking at each day but also uh in our facebook group we'll go back there we can also look at the um the um uh, uh the earnings reports and stuff that are for this week. And so um, anything that I post in our group is going to be saved in our uh, our featured area uh, under like our announcements. If I can just get there here. Uh, so featured areas right here. Uh, and, and so um, every Saturday I'll, I'll post the top 10 most highly anticipated uh, earnings for this week that haven't happened yet. So we have our Monday, we got our Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, with the uh, all, you know, the main, you know, companies here, uh, top ones are gonna be on the top. So uh, uh, the big one for this week is gonna be Tilray. Tilray is a cannabis company. In fact, out of all of them, uh, Tilray is, is the major one. As a lot of people are focusing on Sundial and whatnot, you know, Sundial has, has had a lot of growing pains in the last several years. Uh, I know the CEO is trying to uh, work on a lot of things, so we'll see what happens with that. But uh, but Tilray, like I said, is the is the bigger one. They have the highest market cap, you know, the biggest company, more you know, more stuff, and, and so uh, they're scheduled to release their earnings report um, Wednesday morning before the stock market opens. So we'll definitely have to really watch them. Uh, on, on, on that day, but also the day before, right before it closed. So uh, under, the, under the description, we'll list kind of in in, in, in a priority of, of the most anticipated. So Tilray is gonna be the first one, and your, your crudity brands, Levi's, and, and so on. 
But as we get in through the rest of the month, the, like I said, this, we're in a new earnings season. We're going to see more uh, more uh, companies on here, especially big companies you know, like Tesla, Apple, Amazon, and, and so on. Uh, they're just really right around the corner. So this is just the beginning. And so uh, also on either Saturday evening or Sunday mornings, I'll, I'll put, I'll post the top tens uh, uh, analysis uh, on the, and saved in this, is this page for our reference. So like, for example, Tilray, Again, Tilray is scheduled to re release their earnings on Wednesday morning, and I'll I'll kind of post here, uh, you know, highlighting certain areas within the description of really important things to look for. Like for example, the company's earning release has a seventy percent expecting an earnings beat, a seventy percent expecting an earnings beat for this company. Now, normally, when you look at this stuff regularly. 65% is average. So if anything below that is below average, anything above that is, is above average. So 70% is definitely considered, you know, slightly above average. However, option traders are pricing in around a 16% price movement in either direction, whether it, it meets it or beats it, uh, goes up or down. That's pretty good, 16%. You know, and, and this stock is just getting started, especially if, if we're on the verge of, of legalizing cannabis throughout the United States. And so uh, a lot of people, a lot of investors are going to be play, keeping a close eye on this stock this week. Now, if, if we're a stock option trader, this may be a great opportunity to straddle. Now, if you don't, if you're not a stock option trader or maybe you just started and, and have no idea what straddling is, but as we talked about calls and puts, a call is betting a stock goes up, a put is betting against a stock, betting it goes down. A straddle is, is betting on both. You can bet the stock goes up and you can bet the stock goes down. I know it sounds like it's like like it's a conflict of interest or something. Like it like it's a I don't know, it's like how can that be? How can you bet a stock goes up and bet a stock goes down that you can bet a stock goes down? Well get this. You can only lose what you put on one side, but your gains on the other side are potentially unlimited. So if you lose 100% on one side, but you just gain 500% on the other side, it washes out your loss on the other side and it still puts you ahead because your gains are unlimited. So if, you're, if you know that something is gonna have a big movement like this, that's exactly a scenario that could easily play out. You can easily lose that 100% on one side, but you can gain 200, 300, or a thousand percent, or even you know 2,000 percent on one side. It happens every day. We just have to find which stocks are are going to do that. Sometimes it just happens without even really knowing about it. You know, all of a sudden, uh, GameStop announced that they're going to they're they, they're going to vote to do a split. And all of a sudden, they you know quickly quickly surge. Nobody knew that that was you know going to happen, but that's why it's important to try to find things that we can that we can know that's going to happen, and we can take advantage of that. Sixteen percent price movement. I mean that's huge in either direction. So when we're betting a stock goes up, betting it goes down, it can go either way. As long as it makes a big movement, it's going to be a greatly profitable. Uh, so. The next one is going to be, uh, what was it? Uh, I think your Accruity Brands. Uh, now these other ones aren't going to be as volatile, but uh, I think the last one will, will be, but uh, Accruity Brands is scheduled to release their earnings Tuesday morning before the stock market opens. We see that the company's earning release has a 58% expecting an earnings beat, which is slightly below average. Option traders are pricing in around a 5% movement, which is which is decent, um, but not for at 58%. Uh, next one is going to be our Levi's. Levi's is scheduled to release their earnings report Wednesday after the stock market closes. The company's release has an 83% expecting an earnings beat, which is huge. We don't really see an 80% range that often, 
uh, but that is huge. That means that, you know, out of all this, this uh, uh, mathematical equation, they have a really good chance of beating their earnings. Uh, option traders are pricing in around an 8% movement where they normally have, you know, three, four, five percent movement in recent quarters. So this is going to be a little extra movement for Levi's. Uh, this next one is this uh, Lindsay Manufacturing. They're scheduled to release their earnings report Tuesday morning before the stock market opens. Company release has a uh, or company's earnings release has a around a 67% expecting an earnings beat, which is right around average. Uh, next one is the. Uh, the Snitzer Steel uh, Industries, the, uh, they're scheduled to release their earnings report Wednesday morning before the stock market opens. The company's earnings release has around a 72% expecting an earnings beat. Option traders are pricing in around an 8% movement uh, when they usually averages around 3%. So uh, this is one of the companies that used to have or was struggling uh, uh, with the shortage in, in the, uh, the metal materials. And so, but over time lately, we've really been establishing more uh, mining and more jobs and whatnot, really trying to, to catch up on, on the shortage. And so uh, this is definitely a company that should have some pretty good growth in the last quarter uh, compared to uh, previous quarters. Then we have the uh, Green uh, Barrier. They're scheduled to release their earnings report Wednesday morning before the stock market opens. The company earnings release has around a 63% expecting earnings beat, just right around average. However, option traders are pricing in around a 10% movement, which is huge for this company. The stock, at, where normally this company has a price movement, usually it's around four, five, six percent at most in recent quarters. We have the uh, uh, the Constellation brands. Uh, my favorites: the uh, Corona, the Modelo. Usually, I'll drink the the, the, the dark uh, Modelo. Very good, a lot of flavor in that one. Uh, however, they have their uh, they're scheduled to release their earnings report Thursday morning before the stock market opens. The company's earnings release has around a 53 percent expecting an earnings beat. You know, we're, a lot of these food. Uh, you know, stocks, they're going to suffer because of the uh, the inflation, you know, and, and, and the not just the inflation with that, but also the, the the high gas prices. People are really cutting back on certain items and, uh, and, and beer, especially, you know, good brands like this could be uh, one of them. And so uh, it was, it was the company's earning release had expecting a 30 or 53 percent expecting an earnings beat is not good. That uh, used to be much, much higher than that. That's probably one of the lowest I've, I've seen, but our option traders are pricing in around a 5% price movement when normally it moves around one, 2%. Not a really big mover on this one, but that could easily change due to the, uh, the inflation. If, if the investors in Wall Street think or feel that they could lose more growth here in the near future, it, it, could, it could really, it could really plunge. The Conagra Brands is confirmed to re release their earnings report on Thursday morning before the stock market opens. The company's uh, earnings release has a 62% expecting an earnings beat. Option traders are pricing in around four, maybe 5% price movement, where in the past they've had around one or 2%. Not a really big mover on that one. Now, when I post these as well as the pictures, pictures can say a thousand words at, at times. And, uh, but when we look at, you know, the particular brand or a company, we don't always know what that is and, or, or what they do. And, and so sometimes these pictures can really provide a lot of information about the company as well as the products that they may sell. We got Slim Jim, I mean, we got Hunts like uh, our, uh, for, uh, for ketchup, we got popcorn, we got all kinds of stuff. This is a big company that sells a lot of stuff, but a lot of stuff is at the grocery store. Again, as we we're talking about with inflation and everything else, 
that's what may hurt these companies. So we got to be really careful. Uh, there's another one right in here, the uh, RPM. They do focus on a lot of industrial stuff. Most of their sales are based on that, where 33% of their sales are, are based on consumer products. But these are all products that you know everybody still needs. Uh, however, RPM International has confirmed the release of their earnings report on Wednesday morning before the stock market opens. The company's earnings lease has around a 58% expecting an earnings beat option traders are pricing in around around a seven to eight percent price movement which is a lot higher than it's ever had before in the past where normally they move around one two percent three percent at, at most uh, so not a very big mover on that one and uh last but not least it's, uh, this one i'm not sure what this uh company is i know that they are a fresh ipo i think they were uh, listed in the stock market i think last uh november maybe october i think it was november so that's why i put this on here because that was the day uh, uh that was what they put on their uh, the day that it was listed um however they are uh, i think this may be their um their this may be their second earnings report and so, uh, so obviously they're scheduled to release their earnings report on Tuesday morning before the stock market opens. Company really earnings release has around a 50% expecting an earnings beat. You know, IPOs need more time to kind of establish uh, more data. Anytime you talk to a pro trader or short-term, long-term investor, they usually say, wait until at least three earnings reports until you really start thinking about, you know, your short-term or long-term investing into that IPO. And so we're, 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 we're getting there. Uh, option traders are pricing in around 12, 13% price movement on this one, where the, in the past it, it, had, it had moved around uh, 6%. And so uh, this could be a big mover. We'll have to see. I'm not sure if options are available on this, but it's definitely something we should put on our watch list, do a little uh, due diligence on it and, uh, and, and figure out uh, uh, what might happen because on a movement like that we may want to straddle because even 50 percent no problem straddling with big movement like that that's that's a that's profit there so uh definitely we got to put this on our watch list and, and uh, do a little due diligence on uh on that one uh, now once we kind of go over all this stuff we, we went over the economic reports we go over the uh, uh, uh earnings what's going to happen you know this coming week we want to uh, uh look at the uh the investing.coms always post the top five really really important things to watch for this coming week before it happens because a lot of times we'll uh we may find something in this article that we may have missed, or maybe it's to really add uh, to our uh, our due diligence that we're, we're, we're planning ahead. So uh, top five really, really important things to really look or to watch. Uh, since the highlight of the coming week will be on Wednesday's minutes, just like I said, uh, you know, that looking at that schedule, you know, it looks like that day is going to be really, really vol volatile because of that uh, that that uh, federal meeting, which will be scrutinized and made uh, widespread expectations for a half percent point interest rate hike next month, which is uh, which is bearish. You guys, uh, interest rate hikes are bearish. They they don't help. They they help the the the, the banks, which you know, uh, part of that ten year stock market cycle every like two years um every like segment of the stock market it's their time to shine you know like like we went through the tech uh phase couple you know uh, a, a while ago you know that was really great for two years and then we went through uh you know pharmaceutical stuff you know all the you know medicine and whatnot you know like with vaccines you know moderna all that stuff the last two years you know that's all done now you know we're, we're new it's bank season now for the next two years so that, that's uh, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, uh, 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 JP Morgan and Chase, you know, those types of things. You know, for the next two years, you know, just if you're a long-term or short-term investor, don't wait, you know, until, you know, now it's noticeable, you know, and now it's on the news. Like I said, buy on rumors, sell on news. The idea is by the time it reaches the news that you should be holding already. 
not looking into buying because at that point, investors are already selling because that's the time to sell because the news is now really pumping it up a little extra and giving a little, you know, put a little cherry on the top, you know, and then boom, they, they sell, they secure their gains, they're in, they're out, and they repeat the process on the next biggest thing that's going to happen. And so, uh, but the, one of the other reasons why it's, it's bearish is because uh, as the interest rates begin to, to, to come up, people are not buying as many cars or buying homes and stuff. So people are just aren't buying those really expensive things. They're not getting as much loans and, and whatnot. And so uh, that can hurt the economy. And that's what creates a little, uh, you know, uh, bearish characteristics. But uh, it'll be a little hard for it to do, uh, you know, uh, as we're uh, in the spring season and especially the uh, the summer season, because the bullish characteristics then is just will kind of outpower any kind of uh, bearish, uh, you know, news and, and whatnot. So uh, this will be a little battle, uh, you know, for a little while, but it, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, as we go through, you know, the rest of the year, but al along with the concerns over the economic impact of a tighter uh, monetary policy, the developments around the war in Ukraine will remain front and center. While stocks have shrugged off concerns over the outlook for growth, the bond market is flashing warning signs. The European Central Bank will also publish minutes while the Reserve Bank of Australia is to meet. Meanwhile, oil prices will remain in the spotlight after the steepest weekly decline in two years. Uh, here's what you need to know to start your week. So the first one is the the, the Fed meeting. Uh, obviously, that's going that Wednesday is going to be the most uh, volatile uh, t uh, day of the week, and so Wednesday's minutes of the Fed's March meeting will give investors an update on how officials view the monetary policy outlook and may also contain more details on the plans to shrink the central bank's nine trillion dollar balance sheet. Uh, the Fed hiked rate. Uh, rates last month by a quarter of a percent point, the first step in a monetary tightening cycle aimed by curbing inflation. Currently at a four decade high, since the March meetings, uh, several Fed officials, including Chair Jerome Powell, have indicated they are uh, prepared to hike rates more aggressively to prevent high inflation from becoming uh, in, in, entrenched. Now, they can try to do that as much as they can, but if, if gas prices keep going up, it, that just keeps uh, the shipping costs of things going up. So the things we buy at the store is going to keep going up. So it'll still continue to seem like inflation is going to keep going. So they really have to do both. They, they really have to add more oil to our uh, inventory levels. You know, they, they have to increase, you know, interest rates and, and whatnot to really, you know, to 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 lower inflation. But to lower inflation, that's bearish characteristics. It, 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 I mean, it may seem like a good and bad thing, you know, uh, you know, of what they're doing, but it, it doesn't help the economy. But it does help us as a consumer when we're buying things at the, at the store. But if you guys are making, if you guys are trading and, 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 and are being successful at this, you guys can make $10,000 a day. If you're making $10,000 a day, prices of things don't matter anymore and that is your goal if you're not there already uh, no longer looking at price tags so friday's solid employment re uh, report paved the way for a half percent point rate hike from the fed at its next meeting on uh, may 4th so that is good to know because that is a date that hasn't happened yet but that will we'll discuss more of that as we get closer to that on uh one of our our future meetings now the several uh, fed officials are also due to uh, make appearances during the week including uh well a bunch of other you know major people but you know these guys aren't going to have a big impact on, on the stock market but we, we have to really focus on what's going to happen on Wednesday though, uh, otherwise. So number two, bond market flashes red. So a closely watched part of the United States Treasury yield curve inverted again on Friday after the strong US jobs report solidified expectations for bigger rate hikes by the Fed. Uh, in, uh, inversion of the yield curve when a shorter dated yields 
rise above longer dated ones is a phenomenon that has predicted past recessions. So that's what a lot of them are thinking that, you know, we, that a recession may be near. When you talk to, I think most pros, they're, you know, they don't, they don't see it. So uh, stock markets have seamlessly shrugged off concerns that tighter monetary policy and uncertainty arising out of war in Ukraine could tip the economy into recession. But bond investors seem to have taken a more uh, pessimistic view. Now, when it comes to Wall Street and investors, all they care about is, is, is this going to cause World War Three? You know, if it's not, then there, our stock markets just going to resume as normal even if the war and you know, whatnot are going over there it, all it cares about if, if there's going to be a world war three and if there's not then you know you know it, it, it's just going to resume uh like it always does and so uh that's just how that's just how they they think so however some analysts think that the reliability of the yield curve in in, in inversions as an indicator of recession has decreased particularly as the Fed, Fed's massive bond purchasing programs are keeping elongated yields suppressed. So number three, oil price volatility. It's also something we've been talking about this morning. Both Brent and the U.S. crude oil uh, ended last week down around 13%, uh, their largest weekly declines in two years after the United States president Joe Biden announced a release of 1 million barrels per day. For some reason, I was thinking a billion, but uh, 1 million barrels per day of oil for six months from May. In what? Okay, so from May. So it hasn't happened yet. So that's good. So that means for the rest of April, the crude oil inventory levels are not going to be affected until May. So we have, so that's good information that we did not know until just now. In what is to be the largest ever released from the United States Strategic Petroleum Reserve? Yeah, no kidding. Russia's invasion of Ukraine uh, has seen oil prices rise around 30% in the first quarter, if not more, uh, with soaring energy costs becoming a key driver in inflation expectations. But energy market analysts uh, appeared uh, skeptical of the plan's success. Does the knee-jerk sell-off from the SPR announcement of the release of 1 million barrels a day from the SPR over the next six months won't have a lasting impact on oil prices. So if geopolitical risks continue to intensify, oil will recover most of this week's losses. It's because most of this is most likely for Europe. If, if Russia cuts off the oil and, or gas or natural uh, whatever to Europe, we're going to have to supply them. And I think we said we will supply them up to 10% or whatever, but you know, that's, he said, she said, whatever, but you know, we really, you can't bullshit a bullshitter. We know what's going to, what's going on. And so, uh, and, uh, so yeah, so that's that. So number four, economic da data, apart from Wednesday's fed meetings, the economic calendar is light for the coming week within the main focus likely to be Tuesday's ISM services, PMI economists are expecting the index to rebound to 58.0. Uh, As we were talking about before the previous report was 56.5. They're forecasting it to be 58. So they're, they really, believe that that uh uh what is it a tuesday is, is going to be uh bullish so uh and it even said rebound so they really believe that yeah, it's gonna it's gonna bounce up so it, tuesday should be a, a a good bullish day and knowing that you can buy calls even if you're if you're straddling you can you can still get maybe 60 percent calls you know on 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 on, on monday uh, right before close and maybe 40% puts. That's usually my rule. I, I always trade, I always uh, uh, straddle uh, every single day. And usually it's the same one. It's usually Apple, maybe Spy, maybe you know something else just depends on the activity, which we'll get into next. Uh, I'll, I'll buy maybe five minutes before close. And then the next day I, I'll, I'll sell. Now I started doing that because uh, as a day trader, with less than $25,000 in your accounts, you're restricted to, to three day trades per week. So how can you get a, around that without uh, getting penalized? So that's when I came up with the idea. Is, so I'll buy 
uh, before the stock market closes going into the next day and then trading it from that. And then over time, you know, as I'm learning, I, I uh, started to straddle. Straddle is one of my, my personal rules to always do no matter what, because there's been so many uh, 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 times where you would think that, you know, something or the day is supposed to be up and it ends up down or the day is down and it's going to be up. Things can be manipulated easily by somebody. It just takes one tweet or just one uh, thing of news and uh, and it can change everything. And but when you're straddling, you can utilize that. So if I buy, you know, five minutes before close, the, the stock market closes, uh, there's really no gains or losses on your call and put at that time. But when you go in the next day, you can sell both of those. And uh, because it's, it counts as a swing trade, you have unlimited swing trading, no matter how much money is in your account. And so the next day, so let's say the stock market uh, opens up and, and it's up. I wait for that signal to sell the call. I sell the call, then all of a sudden the stock, the price goes down. I'm holding on my put. You can sell them at different times. You don't have to sell them at the same time because you want to maximize your gains and minimize your losses. Sometimes, and this happens often, where uh, the, the stock price is up, uh, when the stock market opens, I'll sell my call for a profit. The put is at a loss at the moment, but I'll, I'll wait, I'll hold on. And then the stock price comes down after you know 15 minutes or so, or 30 minutes. And then now uh, the stock price is in the red. It's at the 0% and now it's in the negatives. Now my put is in the green. I have now, I, I profited, I gained from my call. Now I profited from my put. I can profit from both. And so straddling, is something I highly recommend. If you haven't yet done it or started, I highly re recommend that you do it. Once you do do it, you'll be a firm believer that that is the way to go because of how many times it has saved you. Uh, 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 and, and it just, you know, it, it's an amazing feature. Like I said, it, it sounds like it may be contradicting or whatever because you're, you're, you're betting one goes up, one goes down. But like I said, you can only lose what you put on one side, but your gains are potentially unlimited on the other side. So we'll get into options here in, in just a bit. Number five is, is the central banks, uh, the, the uh, which they'll be going through March meetings as well, but with slightly more than a week to uh, to go until its upcoming meeting is on uh, April 14th. Um, they'll be surprised the markets last uh, a month, or wait, so the ECB surprised markets last month when it announced that it was speeding up plans to withdraw stimulus measures. Since then, data showed that the Eurozone inflation hit a fresh record high of 7.5% in March, adding to pressure on the, the whole uh, you know, European banks uh, to act to uh, uh, curtail inflation, even as economic growth is slowing amid uh, the lingering effects of the pandemic and fallout from the war in Ukraine. Uh, elsewhere, elsewhere, the Reserve Bank of Australia is expected to keep its rate on hold at its latest policy meeting, uh, setting meeting on Tuesday. The Bank of Canada is is to publish its business lookout survey on, on Monday, and uh, as an upbeat reading could uh, uh, cement expectations for a uh, half percent point uh, rate hike at its next meeting on uh, April 13th. So this is really isn't going to have a big impact in the stock market, but it looks like we pretty much covered <clears throat> a lot of this stuff that's going to happen uh, for this week. Uh, there's a, another website we can go to that we that we really like to 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 watch stock uh, stock options. It's barchart.com. You can also look at crude oil uh, um, you know prices. So crude oil right now is ninety nine dollars twenty seven cents. We'll see what that what happens uh, tomorrow on Monday. But options. So if you click on options, uh, there's most active options. So again, a call is betting the stock goes up. A put is betting against the stock. Betting goes down. So this information is from last Friday, uh, right right when it closed. Now, when we look at this, when the stock market is open, it, it it's live, and so it can update every uh, 15 minutes. But the stock prices change every second. So it's automatically sorted out by volume. So volume is today's buying and selling activity. Uh, Apple dominated uh, the, the list, uh, like always. It's always dominating the list because it is the most favorite stock option to day trade and to swing trade. Apple doesn't move very much, maybe moves 1%, 2% here and there, 
But out of that 1%, you can gain or lose 20, 30, 40%, maybe even 50%, depends on your expiration date. The, the closer your expiration date is, the more volatile that the, that the stock price is gonna be for the stock option. But out of this 1.1 million uh, in options volume for Apple, 57% are betting that the stock's gonna go up, where 43% are betting that the stock's gonna go down. So even if you're not in the stock options, at least not just yet, this information can still be highly critical to you because it there's uh, the pros have this saying, follow the money. A lot of us will go on, you know, Facebook or somewhere and and, and ask questions. Hey, you know, what 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 are we what are you guys buying today or or, uh, you know, what do you guys think or whatever? And, and so they'll just give you their personal opinion and their thoughts and whatnot. But when we're looking at this, we're seeing where the money's actually going. So for example, we're talking about Tilray today. Tilray is the, the cannabis stock. Yeah, it was down last Friday, three, uh, you know, almost 4%. There's a lot of volume on here. When we're looking at this regularly on a daily basis, we know what stocks are normally on here because what, what stocks, options, people normally like to day trade in the swing trade. But all of a sudden, when you see something that's not normally on here, and it is, we got to consider that as, as like a clue. You know, all of a sudden it's on there. So what what had created the activity? There, there's people are buying, people are selling. And so, but out of this unusual volume for Tilray, we have 400,000 in options volume. However, out of this amount of volume, we have almost, or almost 79% are betting that this stock's going to keep going up. Maybe not on that day, last Friday, but they may be betting that this stock's gonna go up on the next trading day, which would be tomorrow on, on Monday, April 4th. That is a huge percentage. Just like the uh, the earnings report, 65% is normally average. If it's if it's below that, then we kind of consider that you know below average. If it's any higher than 65%, then that would be considered above average. So, I mean, this is almost at 80%. That is way above average. Same thing with down here. Whatever this is, uh, tell you ran. I have no idea what that is, but now we got to put that on our watch list. We got to figure out what is tell you ran. It, it's at six dollars and thirty-four cents, and all of a sudden it's up nineteen percent. It's never on this list, and now all of a sudden it is with almost a ninety-two percent call ratio. This is all pure buying activity, betting that the stock is going to go up. So there's another website that I use uh, uh, using uh, uh, Nasdaq. So if we want to try to find more information of like what are people buying, what are they betting, what's their strike price, so. We go to uh, the other tab here. It's the NASDAQ website. These are all free websites. I don't believe in charging uh, anybody for anything. So, and we can easily change the ticker. You can Google it or, or whatever. You can utilize the NASDAQ website. It's just easier just to change the, the ticker in the URL uh, address. So it was tell. So we just replace that, put that in there, and boom, there we go. However, this is all Friday's information. So some of this could be expired. So we have to click on it to, to figure out what's going on. But look at this, out of this, you know, 92% uh, call ratio, we can see all of this data right here. We see their strike price. So what, what, what was it? It was $6 on uh, $6.34, uh, which also shows it on the top here somewhere. Uh, but we have a $7 strike price. We have a $10 strike price, eight, another 10. So to go from $6 to 10, that's like what an 80% gain, even if you buy it as a, as a share and not an option. Uh, but look at the, the gains of the options here. We have 162% gain on the $6 uh, call strike price. Now, uh, we have volume. So, so volume is always the current day's buying and selling activity. Now, open interest, if you're not familiar with options, open interest is an accumulation of the previous day's volume activity. So this, the previous volume combined was about 15,000. But however, in one day, it did almost 22,000 in, in, in options volume, which with 92% uh, call ratio, this is, pure, this is almost pure buying activity. So they're, they're buying 
staying close to the money, which is what I recommend, staying close to the money, which is which means your strike price should be close to where the share price is. You know, uh, you know, six dollars or seven dollars, you know, whatever. I don't see a six dollar one on here, other than well, I mean, it's right there for for the call. So that that would be a good one, a, a safe one to be. But look, notice how it had the, one of the highest gains out of all of them, especially well, uh, the seven dollar one actually had you know three hundred or three hundred forty percent gain. That is huge. But as part of my personal rules and my recommendation when you're doing uh, stock options always pick the strike price that's right around the share price which is which is called the money always be in the money or right at the money or, or near the money if you're far away from the money or the share price for a strike price you're going to experience a much higher time decay or, or depreciation versus if you're right at the money or within the money, your time decay or uh, depreciation is gonna be a lot less. Uh, however, your gains aren't gonna be as much if you're in the money as if you would be if you're right at the money or just, or pretty close to the money. Or if you're pretty far away from the money, um, like I said, your time decay is gonna eat you alive, but uh, it's very rare does the stock price surge up 19% unless we know about it. As we're talking about some of the earnings, there were there was two earnings uh, that are scheduled up this week that were anticipated to be around that 15% range. So sometimes it could be more, but that's why it's important that we know what's going to happen and we could take advantage of that of that situation. So what was it, Tilray? The Tilway was one of them, and then that last one, that Cog Cognito or whatever that one was, we'll have to get back to it. That was also anticipating around uh, a 15% movement in either direction. So that's when we can make these huge gains, 100, uh, 160, 300, 500% gains, whatever. You know, so uh, that's why it's important to really utilize a lot of this information together because we can really piece the puzzle together. So, and again, that was under barchart.com. We got the options, and then that was under most active options. But maybe you want to see the most active individual calls and puts. That's going to be under option volume leaders. So when we click on option volume leaders, we can see all of the most individual active calls and puts. But when we're looking at this on a Friday or Saturday or Sunday, uh, some of them may be expired. So we have the DTE is the number of days until that particular option has expired. So I was looking at this uh, during the weekend, we want to avoid the zeros because they're expired. They're, they're, they're gonna disappear tomorrow. So the most active individual stock option out of the entire option system is this little Apple call. It's a $180 call strike price that expires this Friday on April 8th had an open interest of only 19,000 and now it has a volume of 61,000, which is huge. We gotta consider that as a, as a clue or, or a good sign because if the previous combined uh, volume was 19,000 and now all of a sudden it's 61, which it exceeds over the open interest, is showing us this is pure buying activity. These, this is telling us the investors are almost certain that Apple is going to reach $180 this week. Whether it's on Monday or, or Tuesday, or maybe later on, but they're like really, or until further notice, until, you know, until the trade idea becomes invalid and they'll get out, you know, they'll, they'll focus on puts. Uh, but this is really good, especially as we're going into Monday. We can kind of see uh, with this information what Monday could also look like because follow the money. Where are they betting that the stock market's going to go? And the majority of them just went in these two areas. We have 180 and $175 call strike price, which is a huge amount, almost 120 uh, in, in volume just alone in, in these two individual calls. Now, the next two, these are expired. So the next one is a Apple put. So we got a lot of people that are straddling. 
So a strat. So we have a straddle and a strain mule. So which we'll get into these here in a, in a little bit. The same concept. You're betting one goes up. You're betting one goes down. Straddle is the same strike price. A strangle is two different uh, prices. So for example, we have an Apple 100. So Apple right now is 100. You know the share price is right around 174 dollars. We have a 180 dollar call strike price, and we have a hundred and seventy dollar put strike price. So we're betting one goes up, we're betting one goes down, but since the, the share price is right in the middle, we're, we're, we just, the, the strike prices are different, but they're, we're trying to keep the equal dollar amount, uh, you know, the, the same, even though uh, on this one, um, it's really not, uh, because it's not quite even yet. Uh, you know, $175 would be more, even because one is uh, you know about 30 uh, 38 dollars while the other one is about 81 dollars so it's not uh, not even normally when you're straddling you want to try to be as even as as possible even if this is 80 that's 70 that's fine but you want to try to keep the amount of contracts the same keep the amount of uh, of the value the same unless if you are if you know that apple is most likely going to uh open up in the green then you can do 60 40. try not to go exceed over that you know 60 percent calls your know, for your ratio 40 percent uh for your put ratio you know so you can go a little heavier on one side or the other but just don't go that heavy uh, and then you keep going down, you can see other things because again, as you look at this regularly, you can see what's normally on here and what's not normally on here. So this Eric uh, stock is not normally on here. It's currently at $9.51, but we have a, a call strike price at $10 that expires in about two weeks. Um, the open interest was very light, only 8,000, but for some reason now we have a tremendous amount of volume, which really exceeds that again. So it's showing us this is a lot of pure buying activity. It's unusual buying activity. So there's a lot of massive people buying this for some reason. Now we have a stock to watch and something to do some more uh, due diligence, some more research today on that. Um, and then so we got another apple and then just kind of go down the list we got nvidia so that's expired tilray we got a tilray eight dollar call strike price again very low open interest but we have a lot of uh volume on that uh and then so on so uh, and you can also click on uh back to the options menu here the unusual options activity it'll try to find you know some some pretty unusual activity but when you're looking at this you want to try to find ones with the biggest difference between the volume and the open interest. So uh, on the first page, we have uh, we have 20,000 in volume and then 500 in open interest. So uh, AMD, which is uh, around $108 a share, we have $107 strike price. Oh, it's expired. Okay, so don't worry about that one. Avoid that one. So next one, uh, we have 15, 36, that's expired. So looks like really this 15, is the one that is current uh, PCG um, that is uh, it's currently at twelve dollars. I think this is that uh, that the California uh, uh, electric company that started uh, those some of those forest fires. They, they were going through a bunch of uh, uh, lawsuits and whatnot several years ago. So they're down about twelve dollars. They have a twelve dollars strike price that expires this September six. Uh, but for some reason now, a lot of people are buying into it. So maybe something's going on. Uh, maybe they're 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 done with their all their lawsuits and whatnot. They're looking uh, to go to move forward, or maybe they're coming out with something. I don't know, but it, it definitely this is unusual, and we got to figure out what is causing a lot of investors buying into this last Friday. Uh, and then so the uh, the straddle parts. So there's four straddle lists right here. We want to take a look at all four of them. What we'll want to look for is multiple uh, of the same stock because if we see more than one we want to see like two three four five of the same thing because that means that there's there's a lot of activity there's a lot of anticipation of a of a large price movement investors are not sure whether the stock price is going to go up or down but they do anticipate a big movement in either direction 
So we have GameStop there and we want to start from the top, work our way down. So there's only one there. So ignore that one for now, but just know it, it is on the list. We have KO uh, there, we work our way down. No, we have Tilray there, third place on the list. But look, there's a second one there. We'll keep going down. Is there is there any more? No, So, but so far there's two Tilrays, which Tilray has been on our radar so far this morning. It's been, you know, as we're talking about the earnings, we're talking about the, the industry and whatnot. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know the voting and you know uh, you know all that stuff, but it, it's 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 on here now. It, it's on several of these activity lists, and so uh, we'll keep working our way down. We got this one uh, on the uh, AMC. We got two. AM, we got three AMCs, four AMCs on the list. So it uh, looks like a lot of investors are anticipating some more volatility with AMC. Just not sure exactly which direction. Uh, so we have the CMCSA. I do see there are two of them on here. Uh, so that one, we have Walmart, uh, which is only one. And so that's pretty much it for that list. So then we want to go to the long straddle. Now, short, long, don't really matter. Uh, that, that just really depends on the expiration date. Long, usually when you think of long, you're thinking a year or years. It's not, you know, in the options, that could be like a you know a couple of weeks or a month or whatever. So, you know, they're all the same. So we just want to kind of look at all four and work our way down uh, the list, looking for multiple of the same stock. So uh, 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 looks like the Apple, we got one, two, three, four, we have four apples on here, so obviously a lot of people are, are in, expecting some big movements with, with Apple uh, this coming week. So we got T, I think that's what, AT&T or T-Mobile, I think it's AT&T. Uh, so there's only one there, so uh, UNP, don't see any others on there. Uh, FUBU, uh, just the one, ET, just the one, C, blah, blah, blah. Okay, then we go to short strangle and take a look at uh, that and see if we can find any others on there. We have uh, two AMCs right off the bat, and then we got uh, two more AMCs, three more AMCs. We have five, six, uh, seven, and on multiple pages. So that's uh, pretty dominant there. Uh, we got Tilray there, any other Tilray? We got a second Tilray, so we got multiple Tilrays on this page and on multiple pages. So got to add to that. We have uh, Blackberry there, just the one. Um, Bed Bath and Beyond just got the one there. Lucid just got the one there. Snapchat, Virgin Galactic. I uh, don't see those. So yeah, Tilray, AMC seems to really dominate uh, this page here. Then we'll go to the Long Strangle. See if there's any other ones on this page. So HL, work way down. No, SST, work way down. No, PBR, uh, nope. Uh, C, uh, there's two Cs. We got one there, one there. ABBV, uh, don't see any others. DraftKings, don't see any others. Cat, Tesla, just the one. Uh, FCX, uh, just the one. Neo. So, but it looks like there are some great opportunities in these areas that we can really add to our watch list as we plan ahead. We can kind of, you know, start establishing, you know, some things to watch for, especially as we get into uh, Monday during pre-market. We can also monitor. Uh, pre-market activity on on uh, on on that. Now, uh, how I look at for pre-market activity, because most uh, screeners and scanners will really accumulate a lot of penny stocks and a lot of gibberish. Um, there's a website that I use called uh, uh, Market Watch, and so if you go to Google, you can type in Market Watch uh, pre-market screener. It basically filters out all of the the uh, the, the, the gibberish, all of the uh, all of the um, you know penny stocks, all that stuff. Just keeping you know the the high, the, the high market cap stocks, you know per se. Basically, all of these are based uh, are uh, eligible for stock options. So during the pre market, you want to look at this, and this updates regularly throughout the pre market, so you can refresh it and all these change. But you can see that Apple was, uh, you know, uh, highly active during pre-market uh, as well as the PCG. Uh, and, but now we saw that they were on the um, uh, the uh, some of the options list and, and whatnot. So uh, there's something going on with with PCG that we need to do some, you know, more uh, research on. Then we have AMD and whatnot, Ford and whatnot. So. 
Uh, so then there's GameStop. All of a sudden, GameStop ha had their news, what, on Thursday that they were uh, uh, going to vote to do a stock split. And then, boom, it went it went up. And so, uh, you know, it just gives you a good opportunity to either ride the wave or, or you know, do something that we can kind of, you know, do something for the day. So there's a lot of great information you can get from uh, this pre-market screener from uh, Market Watch. And all this is free. It doesn't cost anything. There's no reason to, to buy anything. Um, and uh, uh, let's see, so we went over all that stuff there, and then, uh, but yeah, we've got so much information in our, um, in our stock market group. Uh, we also have you know, live chat rooms uh, that you can uh, participate in. They really change the design of the um, of our group uh, using a desktop version. But if you, if you don't know that we have chat rooms, we have chat rooms. We have penny stock chat rooms. We got uh, uh, option chat rooms. We have a uh, cryptocurrency chat rooms and we got learning centers, meaning where if you're new, you can kind of learn, you know, in there or, you know, just kind of watch and observe and, and, uh, and, and whatnot. And that way you can kind of, you know, uh, most people don't know anybody that that trade stocks. So that's where we come together and, and, and we help each other. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I do post a lot of stuff in our featured areas, which is kind of like our, our bookmarks and, and whatnot. Uh, now, uh, I'm trying to find under the discussions area here. So if you go to our, our little event, you know, a calendar thing, I did post a, a lot of the stuff that, that we were talking about. Again, the moving averages, the videos are in here. All of the, uh, uh, you know, the earning stuff is in there. You, you'll be able to download the uh, the patterns, but also to top it off, this is the cherry on top. This is what I call our stock market Bible. A lot, a lot of people learn differently. Sometimes you have to be hands on. Maybe you got to watch somebody. You got to watch a video, or maybe you're you're into books. You have an unlimited amount of books right here at at, at your fingertips. Uh, you, you click there. You have access to anything you want to learn. Plus, I'm here. I'm your coach. I'm your mentor. I'm uh, I'm available 24/7. You can call. You can uh, you can chat with me. You can you can talk. Your whatever you want to do. Uh, but lots of books here. Day trading for dummies. You know. Uh, uh, you know that these are probably if you're new. These are probably the ones that are uh, really easy to to learn um, and, and to start uh, reading. But you can download these to your. Um, your, your tablet, your phone, your computer, uh, you know, whatever you gotta do. The more you learn, the more you're gonna earn. You know, there's just an unlimited amount of, of, of uh, all kinds of, of, of books in here and categories. So if you wanna learn more about, uh, you know, candlesticks or, or something, you know, uh, that's all there, you know, for you. And so you just gotta click on, uh, you know, I put it right there in our little thing, or just type in under our search area, uh, you know, uh, stock market Bible, and uh, and you'll get access to it within our within our group. And so, uh, does anybody have any questions? Anybody? Um, everything makes sense. Feel free to unmute if you want to voice talk, or you can chat within the uh, chat room. Uh, somebody mentioned the chat room for straddle. Do you 60, 40 call? Mm -hmm. put ratio? What is your first two selling signals? I'm confused. So selling signals again, that is the moving averages, uh, uh, a part which provides you those really, really important signals. I'm going to try to, uh, uh, show you the, uh, those pictures again, uh, right here those so like like i said the morning opens up boom you got the first signal there and then maybe uh 30 minutes maybe an hour later boom you got another signal or maybe a couple hours later you know you got another signal those are your signals so if you're straddling you know it depends if the stock is up uh if it's up you sell your call and then uh as it's starting to hesitate you know uh then it begins to, to fall you hold on your put until the next signal. The signals are the crossovers between the price line and the your moving average line. Same thing over here. Uh, you, you can use candles or you can use uh, lines. I usually use lines because it's clear, more clear to see. Uh, but that's, you know, uh, those are the signals to look for. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Everything makes sense?
Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you. Sorry it took so long. Uh, I will. Uh, this is a recorded video, so we'll, we'll post this in our uh, group. Christian, do you have any uh, questions? Christian? Oh, me. Oh, oh, hi. I'm so sorry. I forgot to unmute myself. No um, call us. So, so do you think it would be a good idea to put like um, Straddle and Apple? Because Apple did so well um, last week, you know. Um, wh what do you think is going to happen this week? Absolutely. Yeah. And as we're looking at with a lot of the activity with the options, uh, a lot of investors are, it uh, looks like they're anticipating some big movements. Even with Apple, even if it's a $5 movement, that's huge mm -hmm. in the options world. That's hundreds and hundreds of, of, of percents of gains or, or a lot of mm -hmm. losses. But, uh, but also, we never know if Apple is going to leak something. They could leak something with their new latest and greatest iPhone. Or another thing that's highly anticipated is is their Apple car. Apple's getting in the car business, whether you know it or not, mm. or like it or not. But if they reveal or if there's a leak of anything about this car, because they've been so uh, secret on it, they don't talk. They've only mentioned this car like twice. And anytime it, they, they mention it, boom, their their stock surges. So if they ever mention anything about this car or production or anything about it at all, uh, even just one mm -hmm. word, it, it can create a, a a big surge in their stock. And so, mm -hmm. uh, and and so sometimes we may see that you know uh, investors may anticipate that, and we could see unusual activity, yeah. meaning like a lot more volume than normal or maybe a, a bigger call ratio or, or something like that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Roberto asks, do I rely on the S or the RSI as a signal? No, I use, I use just uh, moving averages. I use the EMA for moving average, the exponential moving averages and uh, MACD, because MACD uh, helps provide you a, a signal, a, a buying or selling signal, almost in sequence with the moving average. Now, sometimes your MACD can provide you the buying and selling signal a little prematurely, kind of forewarning you of what the stock price is most likely going to do next. So, so I pretty much use those two because those moving averages in the MACD, those two are the most commonly used indicators by successful professional traders and investors. But you will see that some will use the RSI, but uh, not very many. Any other questions or uh, anybody want to talk over? Otherwise, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll end the meeting here in just a moment. But uh, like I said, if you missed anything, um, it'll be recorded. It'll, it'll be added to our um, Facebook and our YouTube channel. But no questions, so we'll go ahead. We'll end this. Thank you guys for coming, and uh, we'll we'll see. You. We'll do another meeting next week, but we'll see you here in the in the chat room. So if you guys have any questions or comments there, uh, well let's chat there. Thank you, and we'll see you next week.